Today we're going to talk about how to play the long game with your ex. Now, what I've always found kind of interesting about this long game versus short game mentality is the fact that when you're dealing with a breakup and trying to repair your relationship, understanding how to play the long game is going to be essential to your success. I've said this many times on the YouTube channel, but the average success story is going to take anywhere between three months to seven months to play out. And that's usually after the no contact rule is complete. So you need to be, or need to learn rather, to be patient if you're going to want to be successful at this process. Now with that being said, we need to talk a little bit about what the long game is versus the short game. So what is short game versus long game? Well, simply put, anyone who employs a short game is someone who is going to implement strategies that aims for instantaneous results. Oftentimes, short game type strategies are the things that you are most interested in because they yield very quick results. Send this text message and it will make him fall over himself to beg for being back with you. <laughs> The truth is though, most of the time, short-term results can happen. There are short-term strategies you can use, but they are not what ultimately leads to what you really want. And that is a loving, committed relationship with someone, and it doesn't have to be your ex. You just want someone that you can fall in love with, hopefully have a long-term, lifelong commitment. That's what you're going for. Many of you think it is your ex, and if that is the case, awesome. But short-term strategies or short-term solutions oftentimes aren't going to be what gets you that result. Now, let's take a look at what long-term strategies are or playing the long game. Simply put, someone who plays the long game is going to implement strategies that aims for results down the road. I always kind of look at it like building a foundation on a house. Many of you know that you don't just build a house on a plot of land. You need to build the foundation first so that the house has a sturdy place to sit. Well, long game strategies are essentially the foundation upon which your goal will be accomplished. You're not going to see results right away, but you know that doing this thing will lead to something good happening down the road. But what we need to also explore is how the long game impacts breakups versus relationships in general. Man, I'm not going to lie to you, sometimes I feel like I'm getting old. <laughs> so oftentimes I'll be looking for topics to talk about on this YouTube channel and I'll literally go to like Google and type something in and I'll read about a strategy that I have no clue about. I feel like ghosting and breadcrumbing are new strategies that ultimately I hadn't heard about and I'm still getting used to those concepts. And then people are talking about this long game concept. So what do they mean in just general relationships with long game strategies or playing the long game? Well, think of it like this. Long gaming in the lexicon right now is considered something you would do with someone that you care about deeply that you absolutely know would make a great partner just not right now. So you keep them on a hook by occasionally flirting with them or going on on dates with them just to keep the option open. This is what many people consider the long game. Now, I'm going to make a case that understanding this concept is actually essential for helping you win an X back if that's what you want to do. But first things first, long game in and of itself, in my opinion, is a flawed concept. And you know, when I first read about the strategy, I thought to myself, I'm really glad that I never did that to anyone. That would really suck to basically put someone on the back burner. And then I thought back to my dating history and realized I had done this. And this to me is the flaw. Long gaming technically only works if you're dramatically interested in that person. It doesn't work if you're on the fence with that person. And this puts you in a very interesting position because you, have been broken up with most likely by your ex. You've already had a relationship with them. So your ex already kind of knows what to expect being in a relationship with you as opposed to you kind of fantasizing and them putting you on a pedestal from afar and maybe kind of being into it, but maybe not kind of being into it. And this can work in your favor or even against you. It just depends on how your relationship went. And we're gonna get into that in a moment. Ultimately though, if you really think about it, 
playing the long game, kind of putting someone on the back burner on purpose because they might be a good candidate later down the road is actually an essential component to actually winning your ex back. Why? Real quick, I want to say that if you're new to this YouTube channel or you're trying to figure out what you should be doing to get your ex back and you're trying to learn if you even have a chance in your specific circumstance, probably the smartest thing for you to do is actually stop by our website www.exboyfriendrecovery.com or take our ex recovery chances quiz that can be found at exboyfriendrecovery.com. Now if you're watching this on YouTube, taking that free quiz is super easy to do. All you have to simply do is look in the description link below this YouTube video and click on the link you see there. It will take you directly to the quiz where you can fill it out and get an easy answer on what you should be doing going forward and overall what your chances look like in your specific situation. All right, so let's get you back to the video. Okay, so I've talked a lot about attachment styles on this YouTube channel, almost ad nauseum, to the point where you're just like, Chris, shut up, I don't care, get to the content. But it really is relevant here. We know that most of our clients, most of the people watching these videos on YouTube have anxious attachment style tendencies, meaning they're the ones who will hyper obsess about the breakup. They're the ones who will go out of their way to do kind of desperate things to win the relationship back. They're the ones who lack patience, whereas their ex are the ones who are avoidant. Those type of people repel them. They wanna run away from anxious attachment style people, and you just kinda of have this really difficult sort of gap to bridge. Okay, so where does the long game come into play? Well, believe it or not, if you have an anxious attachment style, playing the long game is actually essential for you, except we're gonna define it a little bit differently. Instead of putting your ex on the back burner, you are going to put your ex on the back burner because you know for a fact it will be what their attachment style is going to be attracted to. More on that in a minute. First things first, let's talk about some of the long game strategies that you can implement. So the first long game strategy that we're gonna talk about is simply put the no contact rule. Basically think of it like this, any long game strategy is a strategy that you implement knowing that it's actually going to extend the time that it will take for you to get your ex back. The short game strategy would be to go and beg for them back right away. But you're gonna do a long game strategy. You are purposely not going to talk to your ex to not only give them time to sort of chill and come back to earth, but give you time to sort of chill and come back to earth. And then have some time to actually realize they're not the center of your universe. You need to make yourself the center of your own universe. So the no contact rule in and of itself is the first sort of foundational long game strategy that we advise people to implement. But that's not the only strategy that we advise people to implement that is a long game type strategy. The next type of strategy that we advise people to implement is the high note strategy. You've often heard me talk about the Zigarnik effect, right? the sort of concept that people seem to remember interrupted or incomplete tasks better than completed ones. Oftentimes the analogy I give is if you're watching a TV show and the TV show ends abruptly on a cliffhanger, you just have this feeling that you wanna watch the next episode. You'll stay up one extra hour at night just to find out what happens next and next thing you know it's 3 a.m. because you just kept coming back for more and more. Well, implementing sort of a strategy like that will actually make it take longer if you kind of look at it from a text message perspective or a phone call perspective. Think of it like this. Imagine you're having a conversation with your ex through text message and your short game strategy would be to play the text message conversation out to the very end. Wait until the high note sort of comes and goes and you run out of things to talk about. Our strategy is, instead of doing that, let's prolong the time that this conversation can take place. Locate the high point of the conversation through text message and immediately end the conversation. Not in a rude way, just make up a reason that you have to go or simply just don't respond. This will make them think about you more, but you're not gonna get that instant gratification of a conversation having a start, a middle, and an end. Instead, you're ending the conversation in the middle, which in turn will make them want to come back for another conversation, but in all, it makes the process take longer. The benefit, though, is it helps build value in your ex's eyes. Wow, they're really interesting now. They're not doing what they used to do. What's different? Why, why are they different than me? Why are they different than before? I need to learn about this. The next type of long game strategy is the simple concept of tied theory. 
this is actually something that I've not really talked about a lot, um, as much as I really should have on the YouTube channel, but it's an essential part of the process of learning how to build value, especially from a text message and phone call phase. So tide theory is pretty simple. It refers to the amount of communication that you're going to have with your ex when you actually begin to talk to them. Rather than try to go from zero to 60 right off the bat, we want you to go zero to 60 over the course of five to 10 weeks. Why? Well, think of it like this. You want every conversation you have to be positive. You want it to end on a high note, but at the same time, what you want to do is extend it so it feels like they're investing a lot of time talking to you. How do you do that? Well, the analogy I often use is actually the tide. If you've ever been to the beach at the morning and stayed there all the way till night, what you'll notice with the tide of the beach, where the waves come in and they come out, very subtly, very slowly, it starts to kind of come up towards high tide and then kind of goes back towards low tide. This happens in such an incremental part of the day that you don't even realize it's happening. To you, if you were to stand there and watch the whole thing for 10 hours straight, I guess 12 hours, for 12 hours straight, watch the tides come in and go out, you wouldn't be able to pinpoint the exact moment that high tide came. Why? Because it happens so gradually. This is how I want you to deal with your texting communications with your ex. How do you do that? Well, simply put, think of it like this. You need to start charting your texting conversations with them. Maybe your average conversation lasts eight text messages back and forth, back and so eight from him, eight from you, whatever the case is. What you want to do is slowly improve that rate so that you're talking more and longer, but in such an incremental way that they won't even notice what's going on. But what is going to happen is it's going to take longer to see the results you want, but your results will be longer lasting as well. And the final big long game strategy that we have implemented in our program is the avoidant identification strategy. Now, this is kind of a complicated thing, but again, I'm going to talk about your favorite subject, attachment styles. We have already established that you most likely are going to be exhibiting anxious attachment styles after a breakup, while your ex is most likely going to be exhibiting avoidant type of attachment style behaviors. This is going to be the single hardest thing for you to do. Because if you are having anxious tendencies, the last thing you want to do is to go against quote unquote your programming. But think of it like this. What an avoidant really needs is space. And that is oftentimes where desire is found. Desire isn't found by short game based strategies. Desire is found through space. This is why the no contact rule is effective at sort of reigniting so many connections because you're giving your ex space. So here's the general rule of thumb. How do you give your ex space when you're in that flirting phase? Well, simply put, you need to pay attention to when they pull back. When they're going cold after they've just been hot, you go cold after you've just been hot. So the simple way of doing this is when they pull back, you pull back. And what you're gonna find happens is when they pull back, and you pull back, they're drawn back into you and you can kind of meet them in the middle until they pull back again and then you pull back again and you just continue to repeat this process. And it's a little like fishing. You're just slowly reeling them in. It takes longer, but it works.